Christmas. This evening as we come together in the name, in the full measure of who you are, as we step in, Father, we are reminded again of the Yod Hey Vav Hey, the frame of the full measure of your presence, and we get to step in, live in, move, and have our being in. The full measure of who you are is available to every single son. And it's in that frequency, it's in that vibration, the beauty of who you are, that we are changed, molded, shaped, reshaped, and put into order. It's in that place where we live and move and have our being, where our mountain sits, where all the living letters are to engage revelation in and over and through us. It's where faith is to build us up, to take us into faith, through faith, by faith, with faith, in faith. Father, we get to meet faith. It's in, in you that we get to see the beauty of all creation and the power that we carry as sons and the blueprints that needs to be taken into creation to begin to restore the things that need restoration. And Father, we are the ones that you've chosen. I pray for wisdom tonight. I pray that you open us up, Father. We need to be free. We need to be free from religion. We need to be free from what man thinks. We need to be free of the bondage and that which holds us back. We need to be free. We need to stand before you and know that your will and your ways is in our hearts and that you put inside of us everything we require to, to be built up into what you have wanted us to be. Father, tonight I ask you to open up our eyes as spirits. I really believe that every single one in this room is about to ignite into the next level. An emotional shift to be created for each and every person in this room right now. Father, I ask you that as we sit as sons and daughters in the measure of our Father, in that which we believe, in that which we we open ourselves up to because it's only to the measure that you believe and only to the measure that you've opened up yourself to the Father that He can bless and pour into you. If you have any fear regarding what's coming into you, if you have any fear of the revelation He's pouring into you, if you have any fear of the fact that you're in Him and that you have the capacity to receive revelation directly from Him as the Word, then you need to grow. Change your perception and your view. Because in Him there is no deception. In Him there is only life. It's the abundance and the full, full Zoe life that He requires from, from us as sons to live. Father, as we ignite with you tonight, I ask you to open up our eyes again. Father, let us see to a measure that we've never seen it before as, this, as the body of Christ. As the, the ecclesia, Father, let us begin um, through who we are as sons. Open up the eyes of our soul. Open up the eyes of our physical being and let who we are as spirits literally ignite in every other realm within creation. Father, let the power of your sons be seen and reflected in creation. Father, it is time for all of who we are to be revealed to creation. Father, your desire has always been to take the sons and ignite them into the image and put them in the earth to dominate, to rule, to have dominion, to have sovereignty. Father, let us take up our governance as the kings. Let us take up our governance as the lords. Let's take the land back from the enemy. And that's what we are trying to do. That's what you are busy putting into our hearts to move forward. Not that it's a war, but to just take back what belongs to us. Father, we love you. We praise you. Thank you, my Father. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do tonight, hi, how y'all doing? <laughs> what I'm going to try and do, though, I'm going to kind of, we've done this before and I, I, we've called this familiar spirits, but I want to stop with that idea in the head and I want you to kind of, let's work on the voices in our heads. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. You know, because at the end of the day, we have been taught by the previous leadership in our lives how to hear the voice of God. Now, that sounds great, but let's understand something. Any voice that I hear in here can deceive me. Because there's a lot of other voices in here as well. The way I think, the way I understand, the way I perceive, the way I see, the way I walk, the way I sit, the things that's been taught, the things that happened, the traumas that shifted my thinking and got me to understand things in a different way. My way of understanding, your way of understanding is not the same because my traumas could have been different than yours. And every trauma creates a step away from the truth. Yeah. It creates a different understanding of life. It shows you a different view. And you're no longer um, uh, as, as healed and as whole as what you're supposed to be. Yeah. And as we step out, as those things begin to affect us, it opens up the gateway for the enemy to bring a familiar spirit in. Mm. 
No, I'm not demon Satan. Um, you know, I, I don't particularly care too much for that, but I know and I've seen it and I've listened to it. God's people are not free. We have no idea what freedom is. We think we're free because we're going to heaven. I can't say you're clock, man. That means I'll slap you. That it cannot be what he's setting us free from. See, he says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, it's not how he says it, it's actually when he says it. Because he said it just after John 3, 16. So, for whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I did not send my son into the world to condemn the world. How many of you understand? The church have but only condemned the world. So, okay, so uh, if the world is being condemned by the church, and Yeshua says that he did not come to condemn the world, then who and why are those people that says they are the church condemning God's people why? or the people? That part. Why? Now, must, don't misunderstand me. We are the church. But there's others that say they are the church. They are not. Right. That's right. Mm. That's right. Now, I can, I can be the church in many different levels. Because a kindergarten is still a school. Right. But I don't even understand. I, as a um, high school student, 19 years, 18 years old, can't play a football game against the preschool. Right. Yeah. No, that won't be a right. That won't be right. right. Why? Because we'll kill them. <laughs> now, I need you to understand what I'm trying to say here. We have to begin to shift our thinking to heal to be set free, to begin to understand that if there's no condemnation, then why do I constantly find myself in a place where I feel less because someone's telling me that I did this and I did that and now this and this is not going to happen. Correct. Hmm. There's all these doo-doos and these things that I should have done and could have done and, and would have done if I did this and this and now that I didn't do it, it's going to take this and this for me to get back to this place. It's like, well, let's stop eating of that tree right. and begin to understand what he means when he says, eat of life. That's right. Because when I eat of life, there's not a st strategic uh, plan of, okay, now I'm just going to do all these things right so that I don't make mistakes. No, uh, fool, you have to make mistakes, otherwise you will not grow. Mm. If you do not make a mistake, you, I can guarantee you, you're not going to grow. Right. Because you learn out of your mistakes. And I said this a million times, every invention that has ever been invented was uh, created or invented through multiple mistakes made to get to that point. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of the different types of might have killed several animals before it actually worked. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just, we have to get to the point where we understand. Yahweh is not afraid of us making mistakes. Not. And He's not watching you like this. You made a mistake! <laughs> it, it's, it's like, what, what are you thinking? <coughs> Why would he do that? We forget. And it's almost like, well, I don't want to remind you the whole time. <coughs> you know, it's not something I want to go back to all the time. Every time I see God's people, we want to have to go back to the cross, back to the cross. What, are you right. stupid? Do you keep forgetting what he did? Exactly. Now, please, when I say these things, don't, don't take it personal. That's right. But it's just the way we think. And it is stupid. We're like, well, 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 you know, no, he died for my sins. It is no longer in his view. He can no longer see what's going on according to what I believe is sin and holding me back. When he looks at me, he sees the blood of Yeshua that covers me and cleanses me and makes me holy and set me apart. And I'm righteous in his view again. Mm. Righteousness. Uh, right in the right view, in the right place. It's justified just as if I've never sinned. Yeah. In right standing with him. Yeah. And it's not because I'm, I'm special or I did something good. We understand it is because the full measure of Christ and what he did on the cross has reestablished us back in his full image, in the full image of what he created us to be in. And that image is set apart for me. It is not something I have to strive to step into. Yep. It's not a work for me to try and get there again. Mm. It is something that my spirit immediately has. And immediately, that's why we divide soul and spirit. To set the spirit man back in charge over the soul and the body. So that the fullness of the glorified son can begin to echo the frequency of Yahweh in the soul, in the body. To set me on a pace of growth. Because my mentality, according to what I eat and drink, or what I do right or wrong, what I say yes or no, the things that, that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil has brought to my understanding, will always block me and always take me on a journey of doo-doos. Right. Yeah. And the Bible is very clear. Your good deeds are like filthy rags before Him. Yeah. Filthy. 
Now, if you understand filthy rags in those days, it wasn't a dirty cloth. So what? It was a nasty, nasty, bloody mess. Because when you had your period, you would chase out of the, out of the city. And all those ladies that's out the city that's bleeding at those dirty rags. The bloody mess. That's what he's saying here. It's extreme. He does not like the, 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 the do's. Do not get yourself in that habit of doing things to please him. Yes. Uh, okay, so again, let's go back to all my tattoos. Shati Abi. Before you even start thinking anything that's going to make you get in slapped. Right. He says, do not tattoo your body as the heathens do to please their gods. So there's a motive in the reason he doesn't want them to tattoo their bodies because in that motive, it changes everything. Yes. Mm. Why do you? Because let's be reminded, and this is just historical, it's not something I'm making up. The woman would tattoo the names of their sons that's in, in war on their hands. So he wasn't telling them not to tattoo. The tribes will all have tattoos to know which tribe they're from. The Yeshua himself talks about a mark down the side of his leg that says Lord of Lords. It's a tattoo. It's not weird. It's not an ancient, crazy, demonic, satanic thing. But the, at the reason you want it, the reason he told them not to do it, was the key. Mm -hmm. We have to get ourselves to the understanding that it is the motive behind what we do that opens up a door for life or a door for death. Mm. Yeah. You guys okay? Yeah. Now, I have said this a million times. This is not for babies. Nope. Because I don't want you to now go, oh, okay, so what, I can just go do whatever I want to, I can do whatever sin I want to do because, what, I'm free from it all? No. No, I mean, remind yourself that as a child grows up, he gets hidings if he swears. He gets pepper if he says an ugly word. There's a fight, there's a nastiness, there's no, you can't, you're not allowed to, it's not something you can do. Until a certain age, then when he says it, it's not as bad. When a five-year-old says the F word and an 18-year-old says the F word, it's not the same. <laughs> and you say, well, I can just, when I, I can just swear because I'm now, oh, I can do whatever. No, there's a certain point that Yahweh has educated you. And he has trained you and he was strict in the beginning. That Listen to God, obey his voice. It's that, that strict, the little the dad, when the baby is just born. You know, you have to put the things down. You have to make sure he listens. You have to shout. You have to scream. You have to say, hey, stop doing that. There's a certain discipline that needs to come in. And at a certain age of a child's life, there's no, no more reason for that strict discipline. Because after all the strict discipline before that age, they are kind of have it laid in and they kind of understand the things that they can and can't do. Yeah. Are you guys listening to what I'm saying? Yes. yes. This is how we get free. Because Yahweh is not telling you what to do every minute of the day. Well, maybe, maybe not you, maybe, maybe some of the others that's younger, that's less mature. Because there is a time in your life where God's going to be talking to you and telling you what you must do. Correct. Absolutely. But it can't be for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Because then you're not growing. You have to get yourself to a point where you know the Father has placed in you all the desires of His heart. And everything you desire is according to His perfect will for who you are, according to what He's called you to and what you agreed to before you were sent into your mother's womb. There's a realm that he wants us to connect to. There's a dimension of understanding that we need to have. And it comes from when we are free. I tell you, we are going to war against familiar spirits. Because familiar spirits are robbing God's people of their identity. Robbing them of their uh, destiny to rule. Yes. How many times have you been told that you are just a mere Christian? Yes, right. That you will always sin. You know, according to Jesus, it doesn't matter how many times I need forgiveness. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because he said, well, I just uh, out of, out of uh, curiosity, I said to my disciples, 77 times 7. And that's a hell of a lot of time in one day. You know how many times I can sin? I can go wild. And I will still be forgiven. Yeah. Yes, sir. So let's understand something. It is not about what I'm doing. It's not about the sin because it can be forgiven. It's about understanding, it's about the motive, it's about where you are in relationship and covenant with Him. Yes. Because according to that relationship, you're going to want to or not want to do certain things. According to the understanding of His heartbeat, according to that frequency that you have now synced into, you're going to want to not want to do certain things. Yep. 
You're going to know what's going to distract you from your goal. You're going to know what is going to keep you from where you want to go. You're going to understand that the Father is trying to prevent you from seeing or perceiving or understanding outside of the line and the full measure of who He is in the Word. Right. Because I'm in Him. I'm surrounded by Him. His glory is on me and in me and over me. Yes. Now I'm going to say, Satan is literally out there and I'm just not really calling on him in, the name, in his name, but I'm saying there's, there's demonic entities out there that knows the power and the understanding that you're meant to have the Son. It knows that we are busy erecting high places that no longer has or gov is governed by a demonic entities. That there's prince of roaring angels on high places within creation all over the earth because sons are busy changing things. Sons are busy stepping up. And as we are hearing the call of creation and answering it, things are shifting into place. I say this all the time. A couple of years ago, a hurricane would come in and the prince of roaring uh, demonic power that's there would tell him to destroy. It was his only function for years. It's the only function. Nowadays, he comes in ready to destroy, and there's a different entity. That's right. And the entity say, you will not bring destruction. You will not kill anybody. As a matter of fact, you will, you will tone yourself and spread yourself so that you can only nourish creation, because that's your point. There's no other reason for you to be here. If there's any other reason, then go back to where you come from. Don't hurt anybody, and don't do anything that you're not supposed to do. I'm in charge. If there's something that I might understand or perceive, then it's just not me. It's everyone in this room. It's everyone outside. It's every son, every daughter that grows to a certain point in their understanding. Now, are we in the place where we can literally just breathe these things out of the ocean or breathe them back into, into where they come from? Not quite, but somehow. Yes. You know, I mean, we had a conference in Baton Rouge. <coughs> and I got calls from every single speaker. Listen, I don't think we should do it. It's not going to happen. There's a hurricane coming. I said, I've already taken this hurricane and I smeared it over the yeah. states. It's going to be a light moth rain with a little bit of wind. And we won't have any problems for the entire day. And that is exactly what happened for the entire day. It was a light. It was not even hot. It was just a moth rain. And there was hardly anything going on. <laughs> and as uh, Apostle Craig still talks about that. It was so yeah. powerful. And that is just what Yahweh, and it's not, nothing that I've done that's special. It's Yahweh has just shown us something. And it literally doesn't, doesn't just take one person to do it. One takes down a thousand. Two takes down ten thousand. <laughs> the multiplication of these things is not natural. Because if one can take down a thousand and two takes down ten thousand, what does three do? Right. There isn't even a calculation for that in four and five and six and seven and eight. Yes. Because three is not going to be twenty-five thousand. It's going to be a, a different number. I don't even. I can't even calculate it. <laughs> so if there's a thousand. It's going to take the, the charts yes. down. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. It says, "I have heard many whisperings and the and uh, deframing. There is terror on every side. Denounce him. Let him denounce him. Say, all my familiars, they who watch for my fall." Perhaps he will be persuaded and deceived. Now this is in Jeremiah, but you must understand something. This is always what he desires to do. Kill, steal, and destroy. No matter how little power he's got, the only thing he knows is how to take from you. And if you do not walk in the wisdom and revelation that the Father is calling his people to in this time and season, then you will be under a great attack. And I say that because you have the mentality of I need to be raptured, I need to get out of here, and you are very, very, very disappointed when you're not. Right. And you're not prepared, you're not ready for war, you're not know, you don't know who you are. You've been waiting instead of understanding what he says to his people when he says wait. He's not saying waiting. Right. No, waiting. When I'm waiting on somebody, what am I doing? I'm at that table all the time. What can I do for you, sir? What do you need? You want another water? You need a clean knife and fork. I am serving him. He's not saying, wait on me, go chill somewhere else and I'll be with you in a minute. Right. No, he says constantly be where I'm at. Serve at my feet. Know my ways. Know my will. Know where I'm at. Know what I'm doing. Know my breath. Understand what it means to be inside of me. Hallelujah. Understand what it means to walk with me. I am not your God. <laughs> okay. I am not your God. Hey. You shall listen to me or I will smite you. You don't listen. This is not the God we serve. Amen. It's their God. Amen. It's not our God. Not. Zero. It's God's life. No. 
it's, it's, it's the, the most wisest man on the face of the planet, Solomon, right? Yeah. yeah. What did he do in his kingdom? He dressed everybody the same as what he's dressed. Yeah. Yeah. So you think you're going to walk into heaven and go, Praise God. You're not even going to see, you're not even going to know it's him. <laughs> wow. I'm telling you, we, we need to understand something. He is not what we've made him to be. He is my best friend. But he is also my father. He is also my judge. But the most important thing I need to understand is I am his son. And a son has a whole nother privilege to anybody else. Mm. Because he's, he doesn't want to smite you. He doesn't want to hurt or harm you in any way, fashion, form. All he wants to do is to elevate you. To take you to the next level, to get you deeper, higher, and wider in Him. For you to understand and to not walk in guilt. Every time you feel guilty about doing something, every time someone makes you feel less, it's a familiar spirit. He knows exactly where to hit the little button to make you feel a certain wow. way because your feelings yeah. so easily direct you. Mm. I mean, I'm just talking because at the end of the day, when someone feels a certain way, they want to act a certain way. Well, your feelings cannot lead to an action because that's when the poop hits the fan. That's right. <laughs> the poop. The poop. Sure does. That's exactly when it happens. It's the fan. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Thank you. This is, this is voices. Super hmm. They want to take from you. This is literally all they want. And the less we know, the easier it is for them to take from us. That's why he says, my people die because of a lack of knowledge. So if I can die because of a lack of knowledge, then maybe I can live when I have more knowledge. And I can expect a greater measure of life in greater knowledge I carry. And how do I get more knowledge? Well, engage Ruach HaKadosh and great, engage Holy Spirit. And she will, he will begin to direct you into the portions of the kingdom that you need to engage the sons and the, 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 the men of old, the saints of old, and the, the, the men in white linen, the, the angelic realm, the angelic pan, uh, Canopy that the dimensions of the seven spirits and the 24 elders and the 24 living letters and everything else is there for you to engage But they will lead you as you go through the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes It's all about intimacy and relationship. It's not about I want to see an angel I want to walk with an angel now I'm engaging with my father and I'm in the fullness of the yad hey vav hey sitting in Roha Gadeh, sitting in uh, Yeshua sitting in my father and engaging with the full measure of who they are and the name that they have given me to sit in mm. It's more than just a hello Jesus Give my sons and please supply my needs. He goes, oh, He's right yes. do you even know there's more than everything. that? <laughs> How you guys doing? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, we understand they can be inside of you, they can be outside of you. Little voices whispering, defaming you, telling you that you are useless, bringing doubt and confusion. Mm. And this happens to everybody, I don't care who you are. And if you say, no, it doesn't happen to me, you're lying. Nice. You say, well, do I have familiar spirits? Probably. Is it not demon-possessed? No. Well, how can Christians have this? Because they've listened to voices. Right. Mm. So if you listen to a voice, you're going to be deceived. Yeah. That's why it says, well, I only do what I see my father do. I don't do what I hear my father say. Right. Because when you're in the kingdom of heaven and you look at that way of talking telepathically, Everything that has been said is already there and you know it. Mm. Yes. It's not I'm talking to you and now how can you understand what I'm saying? Now I know exactly what you already said before you said it because right. it's already there. It's pictorial. Mm. Yes. Yes. Great. I know we don't always understand that, but that is the, the understanding outside of time and space. Right. Because if this is a part of the fall, then this is not normal. And this is not going to happen in the heavens because the heavens is fully restored. There's no deceitfulness. There's no brokenness. It's the purity of all of who Yahweh is. So we don't talk in heaven. Oh, well, well, you can talk in heaven because I've sat down with my father and I've seen him speak to me. But the reality is, if this is a broken understanding, a broken form of communication, wow. then the heavens has a whole different place of communication. Wow. And we need to understand it. Because as the sons, we can all, all get to that point where we can see each other's 
revelations and understandings that we walk through each other, live inside of each other and become the unified body that we're supposed to be. They tell you that you cannot be successful. They tell you that you are a failure. They, they, they tell you that you are going to stay in fear for the rest of your life. We understand that uh, preachers up to this point has only preached fear unto God's Pastors, people. Yes. No, I, I mean, I love you all very much and I'm very sorry if this offends you, but this is the truth. I've listened and I've heard how many sermons I have sat down and thought to myself, wow, dude, are you seriously joking with me right now? Exactly. You're sitting behind a pulpit and you're preaching that twack. Exactly. I don't know if there's a word like that, but it sounds good. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Let's say it seriously. <laughs> It cannot be based off of fear, because the perfect love casts out fear, so I would rather want to be preaching the perfect love. Perfect love, yes. yes. I mean, I, I testified about this before, and it was very strange for me, that I was looking at a lady, and I was prophesying over her, and she was bigger than what you're supposed to be, in any way, fashion, or form, right? Um, it was big. She was big. And while I was prophesying and praying over her, the Father said to me, but I need to tell her that when she receives the revelation of his love, she will start losing weight. Yes. I remember it. And I mean, it wasn't six months later, the guy that brought her called me and said, you won't believe this woman is just losing weight. Wow. Well, she's gotten the revelation of his love. Yes, yes. Are you guys okay? Yes. Yahweh is really, truly calling a people that will, that will understand the power of what we speak, we'll understand the power of who we are, we'll understand the power of what Satan, the demonic hordes, is trying to keep us from, and it's not going to be obvious, it's not Satan is going to go, it's not, it's not, it's going to come from the church, and I say this because, well, this is how it works, we don't understand it, but there's a king, there's a dragon, there's a, a giant, there's powers, principalities, and rules of the darkness of this age, it comes down into creation. When, when that king receives the revelation, you have to understand, it's the, the, the revelation from the heavens that comes into the atmosphere of the earth that has to get sifted through the high places to come into the ecclesia. And if there's not a sun and a governing um, prince roaring angel on that mountain, but a demonic entity, then it's not going to receive the full, it's not going to send the full revelation into creation. Because how many of you understand the church only believes in one dimension of the word, which is that which is written? Right. The Bible is the only truth, and if it's not in the Bible, it's not a truth. Right. Well, then you live in deception, because you wear shoes, you wear socks, you have glasses on your face, you drive a car, you live in a different type of house than what they lived in, you wear a different type of clothes than what they were, so nothing that you have on you or even around in your house was in that time or in the Bible, so you have serious problems. Right. You are completely and utterly deceived. You know, there's, there's just some things we believe that we have to sit back and say, well, what about this is really not making sense right now? Right. Mm. Because there's a heck of a lot of that going on in the body of Christ. Sure is. One, for example, I can't be the brother and the bride. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't be the brother and the bride. It's not going to work. It's called incest, right? So the world looks at us and we are crazy. He's my brother, he's my sister, he's my, he's my everything, and he's also my lover, and I'm also going to marry him. And he's my father. My father, my brother, and I'm going to marry him, I'm going to be the wife. Ooh. <laughs> what? Okay. And, I'm, but I'm the, and I'm the body. And he's the head. Well, dude, make up your mind. What am I? Am I the brother? Are you the father? Are we getting married? Am I a child of yours? Are we the body? Are you the head? What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds confusing. Mm. And apparently they say, I don't know who they is, Google used to, well, they used to be really impressive. Now Google, I think, might have taken over they. You know, we used to say they say, they say, now we just say Google. Right. <laughs> it's just a lie. That's what you lie. But we have to get to a point where we'll be in a place that overrides that condemnation that keeps me from being free. Yes. Because man can make you feel a certain way. You have to remind yourself, no one in this room is baby Christian. 
So no one in this room needs to be in a place where you're submitted and someone tells you everything you have to do. And especially, and listen to me, this is not, oh, well, how dare you say stuff like that, brother. God is to be in charge of your life and is to tell you what you need to do. Well, you keep believing that and you'll keep telling you exactly what to do. Yeah. And it's okay. But there's a higher level of relationship and covenant that comes after that. When a son can argue with, a, with his father, or when a son can bring his own opinion to the table, when a son can be in a place where he's engaged with the father so much that they are friends and they can talk to each other, mm. like Moses. Yes. Moses. Just straight up, Lord, no, you need to repent, bro. Mm -hmm. First of all, bro. <laughs> but it's just that place that he desires for us to go. And that place opens up everything. And if you guys have listened to me over the last six months, this is all Yahweh has talked about. Relationship, relationship, relationship. And where it takes us and what it does for you. That place that we can now live and move and have our being. And, and the idea is, is not to, well, I'm going to set some time aside to go. Well, I'm going to spend some time with God this morning. And we're going to spend again with Him a little bit in the afternoon. You know that the Muslims, they pray five times a day. Right, right. Oh, well, let's go do that then. No. Oh, you know, the Jews, they pray more than you do, Christian. Ugh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Again, doo doo. As soon as there's a doo doo list, there's a diaper with poop in it. Oh, yeah. Say it. They want to take your throne from you. Now, we've talked about this before. They don't want you to understand what it means when he says you are seated in heavenly places. I'm not chilling on a couch saying, yo, what's up? I'm on a throne governing with my father. I'm seated at the right hand. No, 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 son. Jesus is sitting at the right hand. No, Jesus is God. He's not sitting at the right hand. I am the son, the measure of the son. I've stepped into him. No longer I love, but Christ is in me. Christ is the yoke, destroying, burning, removing power of God. Christ is the representation of a son. When I become a son, I represent the sonship that Christ came into creation for. Yes. Remind yourself, he died before the foundations of the earth. And the key to heaven, to, to, to eternal life is covenant relationship, intimacy. They don't want to take the thrones. They want to deny your authority and tell you that you are unworthy to rule. But I'm Lord, he's Lord of Lords. So I must be a Lord. He's King of Kings, I have to be a King. In the kingdom of heaven, he makes me a son. That's greater than a king. God's son? I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can be a king and I'll be God's son. How about that? Exactly. <laughs> sorry, bro. <laughs> You're going to lose. You know? I think God trumps king. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, let's, let's understand something. He's given us that place. Yes. And it's ours. And Satan other than one because he yes. wanted that place. Oh. They, want to take, they want to take the things that's supposed to come to you. Yes. Financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, socially. They want to take from you. They want to keep you from having the things that's made to come from your generational line to you. You know, every doorway that was supposed to open, every gateway that was supposed to open, everything that was supposed to shift to be, bring an alignment, to bring you into position, to bring you to the right, the, the right uh, city, the right nation, the right place to receive all the things that Yahweh has promised your forefathers and your, the previous generations for, for things to come in financially and every other area of your life can only come in once you really begin to align with the Father in covenant relationship where you set aside your doo-doos and your, oh, I have to do this and I have to pray and none. No. No. <laughs> no. Bro, right. in your relationship with him. No, bro. <laughs> we say no to the enemy. We, we struggle with these things because we wanted to make it complicated. I don't know for how many years of my life I prayed the, the Our Father prayer. Uh, I know. Well, I can't remember it now, but still. I mean, I know some of you probably remember it and can, can so quote real. it. But what's That's the point? Strange. That's not relationship. He didn't say that to his disciples to create a, a, a order of, of speech as how you to pray. Mm -mm. <laughs> Every attribute that's in that prayer is to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Hallowed be thy name. This is an everyday, all day thing. Standing before him. It's not, oh, I'm going to see if I can spend some time with God today. Really, bro? 
You're going to see if you can spend some time with God today. What are you talking about? I haven't made time for God in, in, in at least six months. But I spend every minute of my day with Him. There is no separation. Where is He going to go? Where am I going to go? How am I going to hide from God? How am I going to not be in His presence? How am I going to not be everywhere He is any minute of the day, all day long? How am I going to run from Him? How am I going to not even communicate with Him? How is that even possible? I'll tell you, it is absolutely not possible. It's not. But if you think it is, then you're not going to understand or perceive it when it's there. <coughs> and yet people say, oh, and all of a sudden His presence was just so dense and so wow, it just came into the room. No, it didn't just come into the room, Kukunat. So you just became aware of it. It's always been there. Wow. He's not going to go. He's not going to leave or forsake you. That's not a joke. God's not a comedian. He's not making funny jokes. He's not saying that you can do all things through Christ. The strength is you try about to double back someone's off with a twist and break your neck. <laughs> and yeah, well, I want the God's will. Uh... <laughs> no, he's talking about a part of you that has no limitations that's supposed to be in charge. He's talking about your spirit that can do all things and when it begins to relate to your soul and your body, it changes the perception, it changes the view, and it changes your understanding and you become what your spirit believes. Yes. Yeah. Because that's the full measured you. Mm. Thank you. Full oh, measured no. you. They want to take your rest. Ooh. Now you have to understand, before we go to rest, Yahweh is bringing back Everything that's yours. Well, I may rather say we are fetching everything that's ours. Yeah. Taking it. Yeah. With interest. <laughs> they rest. They, 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 they want to take your, your rest. They stop you from enjoying the rest of Yahweh by getting you to strive and struggle in your own strength. Whereas Yeshua said, come to me, all who are weary and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Rest means no stress, no panic, no irritation, no frustration, no anger. Right. Yeah. I also remind you in the same breath, none of those things is sin. It's distractions. Yeah. Distractions. Because anger is not a sin, unless you sin. Right. While you're angry. When it says, be angry, but don't sin. Right. So anger is not a sin. Nope. Right. Like all the time, I was so angry, I'm so, I have to repent. What? what? Why, why, you, why you have to repent when you get angry? Anger is a misdirected passion. And I love getting angry. <laughs> I don't know, I just do. I enjoy that emotion. I don't know, I like it. <laughs> we need to deal with these things. They want to bring fear. There's just so much fear in the body of Christ. Yep, everything. Yeah. It freaks me out sometimes. It, it brings fear to me just listening to how scared the church is of everything. Weirdos. You can't preach one thing and win the power of Yahweh and the glory of Yahweh and then say, well, you can't do that because Satan will destroy you. Weirdos. Okay, but you just said that he's all powerful and he's in me. Exactly. But now you're telling me that it's Satan will destroy Because I'm living in this world, now I am in this world, but I don't live in this world. I stand in this world and I govern in this world and I live in this world and I enjoy every part of this world. And everything in this world, because to the pure, all things are pure. Oh, brother, I can just imagine what you're doing then. No, retard. That's what your perception is, because you have this mindset of everyone's evil. You're like a policeman. No matter who you are, if you get pulled over, you're a criminal. Wow. And you'll be treated like a criminal until you leave either guilty or not guilty. I don't know if y'all guys had that, but I, I've had that. Yeah. Hey, I doubt was like a criminal. That's just how it is. <laughs> That's rejection. I, I, know, I, want, I want you to understand it's something about rejection. It's a choice. Uh, wow, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, no, I, can't re I can't choose if you reject me or not. No, but it's a feeling. I can choose to feel rejected by you. Mm. You can reject me all you want, but I don't have to feel rejected. Yeah, if you know who you are, you stand in a different position. You know, that's when the, the, the water runs off the duck's back. Yeah. You know, we have to get to that point where we understand who we are. That when the voices come, we don't, oh, you're right. <laughs> Shut up, get away. <laughs> get behind me, Satan. Move. You know, most of us can't even have Satan behind us. 
Yes. So whoop your ass. Yes. So Yeshua says to Satan, get behind me. So what the hell you want him behind you for? Why? I'm like, I don't want you behind me. But when you know who you are, you can be wherever. Amen. So you have to understand something. In Christ, there's a dimension that overshadows our understanding. He says to Jacob, the area where you lie, and that could be a three foot by six foot, belongs to you. Oh, man. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, bro. But that, that's not what he meant. There's a, another portion that was unseen. Yeah. Because he was speaking to this man in another realm where he wasn't lying flat down on the floor, where he was looking from out of the kingdom of heaven into creation and saw an area that was all belonging to him. Wow. Mm -hmm. That Yahweh has given him. Listen to me. Get up into that place of repentance. To think out of the high place, to see out of the high place, to perceive from out of the high place, to look from out of the high place into creation, to see what is coming against you, to want to take you out and come against uh, your family, to want to kill, steal and destroy. Yes, no. We have that authority, we have that ability. Sometimes we're stupid to it. Trust me. We learn out of our mistakes. Mm -hmm. and I've made several of those mistakes. See that I make kids focus, focus, focus all the time. But no one's telling me to focus, and I have to tell myself to focus. <laughs> and I'm too late sometimes. But I learn out of my mistakes. It's very important you have to learn out of those things. Pride. <laughs> Pride will stop you from acknowledging who you are as a child of Yahweh. And I hear this all the time. Oh, it wasn't God. It wasn't me. It was all God. Yeah. That's pride, bro. Talking like that is pride. Not giving yourself the glory is pride. Well, like, that makes no sense. No, but God did. No, He couldn't do it without you. Right. You decided to do it. It's the coming together. Yes. It's the being seated at the right hand. It's me living in Him, moving in Him, allowing Him to work through me so that I can be the hands that He needs to have in the earth. Yes, indeed. Now when I get, you know, when someone, people come up to me all the time. And they say all kinds of beautiful, amazing things to me. And, and I'm not go, oh yeah, no, pray, it's just Jesus, it's just Jesus. I say, thank you. Thank you, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Come tell me how great I am. Because all I do is I take all of that and I present it to my Father. But I'm not going to say, oh, no, 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 it's Jesus. Because I can't take glory from Him. He can only give me glory. Exactly. And he can't wait to give me glory. Hmm. We understand? Hallelujah. I get it now. Low self-esteem, worth, value. Know who you are. You know what they say don't count. I walk into the gym today and there's a little lady that works at the, at the, at the um, reception and she looks at me and she says, you know, I always want to tell you that you've got this amazing vibe to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, right? Hallelujah. I mean, yeah, I have a freaking amazing vibe to me. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. <laughs> I do. I was, I was talking to someone yesterday, I can't remember who it was. I said, do we understand that when I walk into a room, I have just been spending time with God? Yeah. Me and Paul walk for half an hour, we go to a restaurant, blow their minds. Yeah. We walk in there, and there's one lady who's immediately, hey, hey, you guys, everyone's like, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Then we go walk for half an hour, we go eat, and then we go to the gym. I put my foot into that gym, and there's two sons on fire in there. Do we even begin to understand, oh, well, did you preach the gospel? Did you tell someone about Jesus? No. No, I go, that's you, and they get saved. Thank you. You know, I walk in, and then this guy comes to me, and he's like, you know, I can't stop listening to your, your Instagram uh, reels. I say, well, good, don't. Go to my YouTube. Come to my meetings. Amen. Me, me and Connor are sitting in a restaurant the other day. And there's a man sitting in the corner. He's watching us. And I'm like, hey, you watch me. I'll greet you the bird, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and the next time I see him in the gym, I've never met him, but that I see him in the gym. He comes to me. He's like, what are you guys talking about? Oh, my gosh. He got so excited. He was supposed to come to the meeting several times, but he never did. But we spoke at the gym for probably like 45 minutes. Because there was something about two sons coming together. It's an ignition. 
It's a gateway, something that's nice in the spirit, you can see it, you can feel it. This, the, the city is on fire right now. Yeah. But I know we don't understand it because, because we're so, we're so been taught to go and share the gospel. Go and talk, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not trying to say that's bad, don't do that. There's evangelists in the midst that can't help but do it and they are powerful in doing it. I don't want to do it. No, I don't. I don't. It's not what's on my scroll. I did no, not I agree don't. to this stuff. Now, there was yeah. a time in my life where I couldn't wait to do it. Oh. Where I would just literally walk and Father would say to me, I want you to go to that house, knock on the door and tell that person this, this and this. Prophesy. And I would do it. I remember walking in as a guy was really washing his car and I asked him, I said, hey, you mind if I just say something? And I just looked at him and I said, you know what? Jesus loves you. And I just walked away and he called me back. He's like, no, 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 you don't understand, bro. I've been backsliding and I've been, I've been waiting. This is what I said to the God. I said, you send someone who can tell me that I, yeah, you love me. Right. And I'm still, I was still friends with him. He actually eventually came to Bible school. His name was Stephen. He became his friend. And he came to Bible school with me. I was, I was obviously in third year. He was in first year. But he came after I told him that Jesus loves you. But I don't want to do that anymore because I want to be in a position where I stand in front of you and there's a gate that opens up because of who I am in Christ and you can't but go in that gate as a spirit and be awakened and be reignited with your Savior. Yes. yes. Oh, but you didn't talk about Jesus. I heard someone on my videos yet, but you didn't mention Jesus once. <laughs> Shut up. Shut That's because you manifested him. Woo! Like, I, I don't mind saying Jesus, I love him. But, I mean, I'm inside of him. I can't go back to having to acknowledge him all the time. Right. That's just weird. Weird. <laughs> it's weird. It wants to bring insecurity, doubt, unbelief, anxiety, worry. These are things I see in myself and in other Christians all the time. You know, this is what keeps us from focusing. Keep us, keeps us from really being on that path and pushing forward. You know, I look at, I look at church on Sunday sometimes. It, sounds, it is great, but there's so many distractions from every life in there that the focus isn't what it's supposed to be. The revelation's not coming out what it's supposed to be because no one is at the right place. It's too much anxiety and stress and worry and unbelief and doubt and insecurity of, of creation because why? We attach to the earth. Get out of this realm. Yeah, and if you want to know what this realm is, the flesh. Yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, no, no, Gustav, now you just, no, no, no. You want to know what the flesh is, not this. Yeah, that's right. When Paul talked about get out of the flesh, he was not talking about this. Right. He's talking about this world that we so ah, badly want to live in. So bad you want to be part of. Well, you know, I can't, I have to die to go to heaven. Okay, well, if you have to die to go to heaven, then you're going to die. <laughs> because all you're going to get is what the earth has for you. Yes. Oh. That's why revelations will be for those who are attached to creation. Those who believe that they can't go to heaven unless they die. Those who believe that they can't be perfect unless they die. Those who believe they can't see God unless they die. They will die on this earth with whatever they believe. But the sons will have a whole other outcome. If I am not attached to this world, this world cannot affect me. But you say, it is affecting you. Yeah, I know it is. Because I haven't broken out of what I just taught you. Well, are you teaching us stuff that you haven't experienced yourself yet? Yeah. <laughs> well, how else are we going to know about it? No one else is teaching it. Sure not. No, sure no one's not. doing it yet. No one. The ones who are doing it, it's not going to come yet to teach it. Sure not. Matter of fact, the ones who's doing it, no one even knows they're doing it. Right. This is every now and then someone would come with their testimony of what they've seen or heard or experienced. We know that there's men out there that's three, four, five, six hundred years old, waiting for sons like me and you to go engage with them in the rounds. They so are. But we are, we are so afraid. We're so anxious for what's happening around us in the world. You know, nowadays you stump your toe, and ow, my, my toe, and ow, that was sore. And that's over. A normal, natural human being, it's over. Thank Christians you. nowadays stomp my toe. Oh no, it's going to be infected. There's going to be a clot. It's going to create a. I need to go see the ER. I need to get medication. I need to get a pulse. Oh my goodness, I'm going to die. And, and I'm, I'm not even over. I'm not even exaggerating. 
I had a friend that literally went to the ER because she got cold. You want to tell me you cannot deal with a cold without going to the ER? <laughs> I mean, come on now. You have to understand something. Whatever I allow will open me up. If I allow my faith to grow by staying away from certain things, it will grow. Yeah. But if I put my hope, my faith in something else, that will also grow. Yeah. Yes. Let me tell you when last I was in a, doc at a doctor's office. I can't remember. Can't remember. I actually sent my son to do something and I called another lady, another um, a doctor's office and they said, well, you need, we need the records, your son's uh, medical records. I said, well, we've been in America for 10 years. He's never been sick, never had the flu, never had the cold, never had anything wrong with him. What do I do? 10 years. I've never been sick, not once. Talking about my second oldest son, Kieran. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, I don't know. And all I do is pray over these men and women. I love them. Mystery. My oldest son got has got diabetes. It's in a bloodline, which means my, my father's um, daughter's two kids have diabetes. I didn't even know it wasn't my family. Now that's another thing that I need to go work on. But at the end of the day, he needs to work on it. My daddy can't do it for him and pray with him and stand with him, but he has to grow into that position where he now says, okay, let's take this thing down. Yes. Yes. I have my own issues. I have my own problems. I've taught him enough. Yes. My oldest son, he knows now, he knows how to do life. Yes. And I'll continue to teach him. How are you guys doing? Good. Mm -hmm. Good. God wants to deal with these things in our lives. He wants you to uh, receive a crown uh, of royal identity. He wants you to receive your, uh, your destiny. You, uh, the, 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 the trophy room of Satan is full with those crowns. And it's full with the uh, destinies of people who have missed theirs. We oh, are not those people. Oh, no. no we, as a matter of fact, whatever has been missed, we can go fetch for ourselves. Yes. Thank you. There's nothing to stay in his den. There's nothing that he can hold on to. Nothing. Matter of fact, when we begin to understand that he is literally defeated and disarmed and he doesn't have any of the power that he thinks he has, only things that he's doing and the things that he's allowed to do now is the right that we've given him and our ignorance and stupidity. Oh. We have given him too much power. Yeah. Way too much. Absolutely. And it's because we've been afraid. Sure. Because at the end of the day, he is not even the same species. And I've said that a million times. It's Two strand, DNA. strands of DNA. Yeah. I'm the only species created in the, my father's image. God's image. Yes. The God being. Yeah. The God being. It says it's time to rise up. Time to see, perceive, and run with a full measure. So this is the day that, uh, when all the mantle Satan has stolen are coming back to uh, Yahweh's people. Yeah. It is in the violent... Who take the kingdom. It is the violence to take the kingdom by force. Yes. By force. And I have a bunch of kingdom ninjas. Yes. That's what's required. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Get yourself to the point where you know what you want. Yeah. Oh. To be under the enemy's feet. For the enemy to be under your feet. Yes. To have him literally squashed. Now you have to remind yourself when Paul talks about this, he's talking about the Roman soldier that has a, an inch of uh, yeah. nails on his boots. And so I'm not going to just stamp on your head and hold it there to keep you uh, from biting me. I'm crushing your head. I'm killing you. When you need to enter into the realms of the heaven and take up your authority to rule. You need, to, you need to stop listening to the rubbish that is being whispered yes, yes. into your head. Trash. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. If yes. your God's whispering to you, what's he saying? Stop whispering to me. Yeah, shut up. Someone speak, keeps whispering to you, it's a very annoying thing. <laughs> What? Excuse me? I can't... So, what? <laughs> Rabbit? <laughs> now, I, now I have rabbit now. Okay, ho. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when I was younger in the spirit that, that would be like that because that's all I knew. It would 
see something, and according to what you see, a flower, what's God saying? Why am I seeing a flower? Okay, well, this is what he's saying. <laughs> well, I'm never really sure of what he's saying. Let's hope that is what he's saying. <laughs> but the interpretation, I mean, I've read, read five different dream interpretation books, and they're all completely different. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful God. I mean, I'm that there's, there's some ministries out there that should not be ministries. That's, should not right. Be That's, That's right. right. That's right. Because it's not a real thing. Amen. Deliverance is a ministry is not a real thing. They can't have a deliverance ministry. Your, your whole entire ministry cannot be based off of deliverance. I mean, where do you see that in the Bible? Who has done that in any way, fashion, or form? Where in the Bible do you see someone that's only done that, only done this? It's always about the kingdom. The kingdom is multiple dimensional realms of revelation. It's not based off of one understanding or one perception or one view. <laughs> You need to stop listening to those voices and start opening your heart to the Father. See Him, perceive Him, walk in heaven, and understand that you are there to see Him and understand all that He has for you. Listen instead of what God says to you, that you have authority to uh, succeed because He has destiny and destined you, sorry, destined you to success. <laughs> And I love the fact that when we begin to understand the measure in which He opens us up, it takes us to a place of success. And I say that because He will want to bless you according to your responsibilities in the kingdom. Now, according to your responsibility, according to who you are as a son in His kingdom, He's going to pour into you financially. Now, we wonder why we're not being blessed. And, and there's only a certain measure, and there should be more. And, then, and more is coming, and we don't always know what's going on. And Should I work there? Should I go work there? Should I take this? Should I buy a business? What should I do? It's, it's difficult for us to understand these things, but there's a level that you reach that automatically opens up certain things for you. That's why I always want to grow. And I said this a million times, I'm going to close with this. If you wake up tomorrow morning, and you're the same as what you were yesterday, you are backsliding. That's right. <laughs> Father, we're going to come before your throne tonight. And we are ready to step up. We're ready to go deeper. We're ready to go higher. But we ask that you open our hearts as your sons and daughters. Father, let's begin to see the measure in which we need to be released into creation to have the power and authority that's meant to come to us as your sons. I pray, Father, that you will reveal to us the mysteries and the secrets for us to grow and mature to where we are supposed to be in this time and season of our lives. I pray, Father, that the understanding... Uh, of us walking in the full measure of financial, mental uh, 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 and capacity, financially, um, spiritually, socially, in all aspects of life, let us elevate to levels that's never been seen in creation. Father, we are a company of people that says yes, no matter what. Yes, 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 yes. yes. There's, no, there's no, okay, well, I'll think about it. Yes, Lord, let's go, let's do it. And I pray you will open us up for it. Give us the understanding we require. And Father, let us be propelled in all of what you have for us. We love you. We praise you in the name of Yeshua. Amen.